In this video, we're going to see another piece of standard, very standard SAT math prep advice. And sometimes you'll hear it called plug in the answers. I call it plug in your own, or sorry, not plug in the answers, plug in your own numbers. I call it test your own number, whatever you call it. It's called plugging in. Very standard. Now, again, just like with testing your own answers, this was a much more useful technique, I think, back in the old SAT. It's not with the changes they made from the old to the new SAT math section. It's not as useful now as it was. So I think prep programs that lean on it heavily are doing it to service because frankly, it's not just as useful as it was. Still, again, something we want to have in our toolbox to pull out what we need. Uh, so let's see how that works out. For these problems, I'm going to show you both how to solve it with plugging in and the traditional method. On a car, Sam tripped, Sam drove M miles, Kara drove twice as many miles as Sam, and Darren drove 20 fewer miles than Kara. In terms of M, how many miles did Darren drive? Now, you know to use plugging in when your answers are variables or letters. That's going to be a pretty good sign to you on any problem. It doesn't just have to even be a straight up algebra problem. It could be a geometry problem, for instance, uh, that has letters in the answer choices. Uh, you know it's going to be a pretty good candidate problem for plugging in. So how does it work? Well, basically, it's how it sounds. For M, pick a number. Pick a number that's useful. Some numbers will be uh, easier to use than others. So I wouldn't put in like 31 here. It's just why would you make things worse for you? But like 10, you know, pick good numbers. Avoid 1, avoid 0. Sometimes they can make things a bit weird. So let's just try 10. So on a car trip, Sam drove 10 miles. Kara drove twice as many miles as Sam. So Kara then drove 20. And Darren drove 20 fewer miles than Kara. Okay, so Darren then drew zero. Those are, I mean, it's good enough. It works. In terms of M, how many miles did Darren drive? So what do we do now? We want to find out how many miles did Darren drive. Well, we know he drove zero. So we want to find which of the answers here equals zero. So how do we do that? Well, we look at the answers. We plug in our variable in for theirs. So 2m plus 20, that's 2 times 10 plus 20. That's equal to 40. No good. How about this one? 2 times 20 minus 20. That's equal to 0. Yep, that looks good. Now for the plugging in, you always want to test all five. So don't just stop at B because you might see that more than one will work. And if that's the case, you just got to plug in another number and eliminate from there. Uh, 10 divided by 2 plus 20? No. 10 plus 20 divided by 2? No. 10 divided by 2 minus 20? No. None of those equal 0. So the only answer here is B. So that's the plugging in method. How would you do it normally? Well, this one, it's again, translating the real into an equation, right? One we've seen earlier. On a car trip, Sam drove M miles. So Sam, there's M. Kara drove twice as many miles as Sam. So Kara drove 2M. And Darren drove 20 fewer miles than Kara. So Darren is 20 less than 2M. So it's going to be 20M minus 20. So how many miles did Darren drive? 20M minus 20. Now, you might argue it's easier to do it this way, and it probably is the second way rather than plugging in. But I showed you this for two reasons. One, if you do it on easier problems, it helps you learn how to do it on harder problems. Uh, and two, it just shows you overall how the method works on an easier problem. I think it's just easier to grasp when the situation is a little bit easier to work with. Um, so overall, that's the plugging in method. We're going to see it for some harder problems, though, in a second and see how it can really help us for these. A boat costs X dollars, and this cost is to be shared equally by a group of people. In terms of X, how many dollars less will each person contribute if there are four people in the group instead of three? Okay, so this one's a four out of five in difficulty, so it's pretty hard. So we could do some algebra, and we will do that in a second. But let's just go ahead and plug in. We see the variables are in the answer choices, so let's just go ahead and go from there. A boat costs X dollars. Well, here we want to kind of look ahead a bit because we want to plug in for X. But if we plug in something like 100, it would work good for 104, but 103 may not work good in terms of the division. So let's pick something that will just work easy with the math. Again, if you don't pick something that's easy with math, it's okay. You just got to be careful with the math you're doing. I'm just picking numbers that work better and are easier to work with. And how you determine what numbers are easy to work with is something you just gain with experience and time. So don't stress too much about it. Again, it's just not a technique where to use too often. And even if you use ugly numbers, you're just going to have to work with ugly numbers. That's all. A boat costs $120. This cost is to be shared equally by a group of people. In terms of X, how many dollars less will each person contribute if there are four people in the group instead of three? So think of it. We're dividing that 120 by four. And we're dividing it by three, and we're seeing the difference in the cost per person in those cases. So if it's shared by four people, each will have to pay $30. If it's shared by three people, each will have to pay $40. So what is the difference? The difference is 10. 
And notice this is the answer, right? They want to know how many dollars less will each person contribute. So the answer should be 10. So we want to find the choices which one equals 10 by plugging in 120 in for x. So 120 is here. So 120 divided by 12 is 10. Hooray. 120 divided by 4 is 30. Nope. Nope. Set, nope, this is way too big, way too big. So the only answer that gives us 10, you can verify those on your own if you don't believe me, is going to be A. So that's the plug-in method. It makes a number 14, which is a hard, into a relatively easy problem. How do we do this with algebra? Well, again, remember that in the first instance, we're dividing the cost by 3, and then we're dividing the cost by 4 in the other. Now, notice in the case where it's divided by 3, you're going to pay more. In the case where it's divided by 4, you're going to pay less. So we're going to subtract this value from this because we want to find how much less you'll be paying if there are 4 than if there are 3. So we need to do the subtraction. So let's go ahead and um, get the least common denominator. So that's going to make a denominator of 12. And in order to do that, we have to make this 4x over 12 and 3x over 12. So 4x minus 3x is x. So we get x over 12. That's the algebra way. A little bit harder, a little conceptually more challenging, and the math is a bit rougher. I think plugging in, unlike number 2, which you really didn't need to plug in at all, 14 really benefits from a plug-in uh, when you do it systematically. Let's move on to number 13. If t is a number greater than 1, then t squared is how much greater than t? Again, letters in the answer choices. Even if there are numbers here, it doesn't matter. Let's just go ahead and plug in our own number. If t is a number greater than 1, okay, so 4 t squared is how much greater than t? Well, t squared would be 16. And how much greater is that than t? Well, it's 12. So let's go to the answer choices and see which one's 12. Is one a 12? No. B? No. C is t, which is 4? Nope. Uh, D, 4 times 4 minus 1, or 4 times 3? Yep, that equals 12. How about this one? 4 minus 1, which is 3, times 4 plus 1, which is 5. 3 times 5 is 15. Does not equal 12. So d is the best answer here. Again, how would you do it without plugging in? Well, we know that t is a number and t squared is the other number. How much greater is t squared than t? Well, we're just going to do t squared minus t, right? That's how much greater t squared is than t. You just subtract them. Well, notice none of the answers are that, so maybe we can factor and see what happens. Well, this is the same thing. If we pull a t out, we get t times t minus 1 is the same thing as this. And notice that's just choice d. So that's the algebraic way. Again, whether you like the plug-in method or you like the algebraic method is up to you. In the end, it's whatever gets you the right answer. Some people like plugging in. Some people like doing the algebra. Uh, but I think for most people, it'll depend on the case by case. And I think the best case scenario is, you know, try the algebra if you like, but you can always fall back on the plug-in. Let's look at this last one, on number 20. So one of the hardest ones in the section. A telephone company charges X cents for the first minute of a call and charges for any additional time at the rate of Y cents per minute. If a certain call costs 5.55 and lasts more than one minute, which of the following can express following expressions represents the length of that call in minutes? All right, so rough kind of problem here. Notice the call costs 5.55, lasts more than a minute, and we have some costs here. So let's go ahead. We got variables in the answer choices. Let's go plug in. Again, let's use some easy numbers. A telephone company charges X cents for the first minute of a call and charges for any additional time at the rate of Y cents per minute. Okay, so let's make this, I don't know, 10 cents for the first minute, and let's make Y5. Again, you can use your own numbers. It all should work out. If a certain call costs 5.55 and lasts more than a minute, which of the following represents the length of the call in minutes? So given our prices, let's find out how many minutes this person talked. Well, notice $5.55 is the same thing as 555 cents, right? So for the first minute, we subtract that off, costs $0.10, cents, so the rest of the call costs $5.45, cents, and we know our rate was $0.05 cents per minute, so let's divide that by 5. So 5.45 divided by 5 is 109, and 109 plus 1, because for the first minute, is a total of 110 minutes. So we want to go to the choices using our numbers and find 110, and that will get us the answer. Um, so 5, 5, 5 minus X over Y. So 5, 5, 5 minus 10 is 545. And 545 divided by 10 is 109. So, or sorry, it's, so yeah, 5, 5, 5 minus 10 is 545. And 545 divided by 10 is 109, not what we're looking for. How about this guy? 5, 5, 5 plus X minus Y. So let's see, we got 555 plus 5, sorry, plus 10. Uh, which is 565, 
and then 5, 65 minus 5 is 560. And we're going to divide that by 10. So we divide 560 by, or sorry, by 5. Divide 560 by 5, what do we get? Uh, 112, I think, right? So that's no good. Uh, we want to get 110 as our answer. How about C? 555 minus X. Well, X was 10, so we have 545. But then we're going to add 5 back on, so we get 550 divided by 10. Sorry, divided by 5. Keep doing that, because it's Y, which is 5. And 550 divided by 5 is 110. That looks good. Let's check D. Let's check E. We look E. E is not going to be good, right? It's 555 divided by 15. That's not even going to get us 110. How about this guy? 555 five, five minus x minus y. So it's 555 five, five minus 5 minus 10. So minus 15 over 5. So it's 540 over 5, which is 108. Not what we're looking for. So it's not D. Best answer here is C. So this one, as you can see, is harder. There's a lot going on. As you can see, by the way I was going through it, I would want to be very careful to write things down and, be, and not make... Um, arithmetic mistakes because the thing you were turning this problem into an arithmetic problem but we can still make errors so just be very systematic if you're going to plug in it's a number 20 so it's going to be hard so you know even if we plug in it's not going to make a hard problem into the easiest thing in the world uh, so overall follow that and you'll be golden but let's look at it for algebraic uh, how we would solve it algebraically so the telephone company charges x cents for the first minute and y cents for the minute after that now the call costs 555 well let's see if the call costs 555, we know that is made up of X cents for the first minute plus um, Y cents times the minute after the first. So T is going to be the number of minutes. And it's going to be times T minus 1, right? Because we don't want to count all the minutes. We just want to count the minute after the first. So we're going to subtract 1 off of the total number of minutes. So we go ahead and we just rearrange this for t. So we're going to get 555 minus x equals y times t minus 1. Divide both sides by y, we get 555 minus x divided by y is equal to t minus 1. So we go ahead and bring the 1 over. We get 555 minus x over y plus 1 is t. So we look up here and none of those really match it. So we should probably try to combine this in. So we can make this guy y over y, right? That's the same thing as 1. So now we can add the numerators together and we will get 555 minus x plus y all over y equals t. And notice that is exactly choice c, which is the other way to do it. So either way you do it, it's going to be a hard problem. A lot going on, a lot you have to figure out, but I think in this one, as long as you do the arithmetic okay and you plug in the numbers you want to do. So here I would even to be extra careful, I would plug in, you know, I would say 10, 10, 10. I write the numbers here just so you don't make the mistakes of plugging in the wrong numbers, as I almost did. Um, and that will ensure you do it right, do the arithmetic, and you there you go. You got a number 20 in your pocket. All right, let's move on to the next video.